Can scoliosis cause urinary issues? When I consult with patients regarding their scoliosis, a lot of patients have concerns that is their scoliosis affecting other things in their body, specifically organ and other systems of their body, like cardiovascular systems or, or lung function or even bladder function. And one common concern tends to be something called neurogenic bladder dysfunction or how well the bladder functions as a result of the impact of scoliosis. You see, because there are muscles and there are nerves that actually help control the bladder, and these muscles and these nerves can be affected, unfortunately, with scoliosis to lead to an underactive or an overactive bladder. And so therefore, what are some symptoms associated if you could be experiencing this type of uh, dysfunction? One thing is called uh, loss of bladder control, that you, don't, you can't control your bladder very well. This can lead to urinary incontinence, this can lead to leakage, and this can lead to the, the desire or the frequency or an urge to urinate more often than you actually need to. And the connection between this thing is actually neurological, meaning there is you have your brain and you have your spinal cord which runs through your spine, and this actually forms your central nerve system. And what comes out of the spine are something called spinal nerve roots that actually exit to the body to actually go into different organs, like your lungs, your kidneys, your heart, your liver, but it also goes down to your bladder. And when the scoliosis affects the nerves, it affects how well the signals are being transmitted to the bladder, so therefore it can affect the actual signal and transmission, but it can also lead to weakness within the bladder itself, therefore creating the, the inability for the, you to be able to control your bladder properly because the signals are not properly getting through there. The second connection here is the actual size of or the length of your torso especially in the adult case. As curves progress in the adult stage, they tend to compress the torso, and this actually leads to a complete uh, decrease of distance within the torso, and this decrease of distance causes everything to sink with it, and it can lead to physical pressure of the bladder itself, and this physical pressure could lead to some of these incontinence or the urge to urinate when you don't really need to. So that's the second connection. It could be neurological, it can actually be uh, functional and structural. When we look at curvatures, which curvatures of the spine actually affect the bladder more often? We know the scoliosis can affect any area of the spine, meaning the cervical spine being the neck, the thoracic spine being the mid-back, and then the lumbar spine being the low back. More than likely, when we deal with what's affecting the bladder, we're looking at lumbar or lower thoracic, we call thoracolumbar curves. The lower the curve, the more likely it could possibly affect the bladder, meaning causing potential bladder issues. When we look at scoliosis types, we know that bladder issues are, can be more associated with different types of scoliosis. There are four main types of scoliosis. We're looking at idiopathic cases. This is unknown cause. It typically occurs in adolescent stage and progresses during growth normally not very associated with scoliosis, uh, with bladder concerns. Congenital is when patients have hemivertebras in the spine or a half bone, you're born like this, which causes a curvature at the spine, not as common to develop uh, bladder issues. Degenerative scoliosis starts to increase the com how it can affect bladder issues, because degenerative scoliosis is when the spine deteriorates and degenerates rapidly as a result of a curvature, can start affecting, and it's most common in the lumbar spine, and it can affect the, the nerves that exit into that area of the body which affect the bladder and it also decreases the length of that area of the body which can lead to physical compression of the bladder as well. So degenerative you start getting more common but the most common type is something called neuromuscular. Neuromuscular is actually the causation of scoliosis is because it's affecting the neuromuscular system of the body. These are different types of syndromes and once you affect the neuromuscular system of the body you start affecting the connective tissues, the muscles and the nerves, you can directly affect the way the bladder functions as a result. The severity of the scoliosis can also affect uh, the, the, how much it possibly could affect bladders, meaning the more severe the scoliosis is, the more problems it tends to cause. So severe curves are curves that are considered 40 degrees or greater. Under 40 degrees, but greater than 25, is considered a moderate scoliosis, and 25 degrees or less are considered mild. The problem is, is that every severe scoliosis, meaning 40 degrees or greater, was once less than 25. Curves always start off small and they progress, either they progress rapidly during adolescence, they progress slowly as an adult, but they always progress. Nobody just develops a, you know, a 40 or 50 degree curve in one moment, it, it, they progress with time. And so therefore this progression causes compression to the nerves, causes more nerve involvement, causes more decreased space in this lower lumbar area, which potentially could affect 
uh, the bladder more and lead to more bladder impairments. So therefore, the bigger the curve, the more likely it is to create a problem. So my number one solution, if this is something that's affecting you and something you're concerned about, what, what should you be thinking about? Number one is you want to reduce what's causing the issue. And what's causing the issue is the size of your curve. Make your curve smaller, increase the length of your torso, more likely to, dec to, to decrease the compression to the nerve system. You're trying to improve the length or the room for the bladder to function properly. You're more likely to improve what's actually causing the problem and therefore re resolving the, the possible impairment or functional bladder issues that you may be occurring. However, if you have scoliosis and you're not experiencing this, what do I recommend? Be proactive. We know the bigger your curve becomes, the more likely it is. So if you act proactively to your curve, no matter what size it is, whether it be mild, moderate, or even if it's severe, you want to keep it smaller. Smaller is always better. So we always want to keep curves smaller. We never want to let curves progress because if they progress, they're more likely to cause problems. So be proactive if you have scoliosis. If you're unfortunately experience this, this problem, my recommendation is you seek out a reductive, a reduction process to actually reduce the curve to try to help you get past what you're experiencing, number one. But number two is don't let it continue to progress because if it does, it's going to continue to affect this concern more and more likely and cause more and more issues and involve this bladder concern into possibly even other issues in your body, which of course you don't want to be dealing with. So reduce the cause and be proactive if you have scoliosis. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.